Hey guys, this is Tommy from the Ravens Creek Study, and we have been looking at uh, the Eternal Covenant, kind of going through a Biblical Theology 101. If we start with the book of Genesis and just start reading, what is it that the Bible is putting forth? What is it? And so I've been trying to kind of develop the understanding of the Bible from going from Genesis forward, uh, but I'm, I'm doing this in a way that you can see the New Testament understanding in the Old Testament. So it's not just kind of New Testament says this and we need to understand the Old Testament through the New Testament. It's very much working hand in hand together. The New Testament is building upon what was said in the Old Testament instead of this new revelation that the old is understood through this new. I, I think that it's important that we understand that uh, God has continued to progressively reveal himself. And in that progression... There, there is a fundamental understanding that you have to get from the book of Genesis, from Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, from Joshua and forward. And here we are. We've come to 1 Samuel. And the question today is, what is the significance of the prophet Samuel? Uh, so... Samuel is such a huge character in the Bible. I know that I skipped the book of Judges. Uh, I did that on purpose. Um, the book of Judges, it's not that there's nothing significant to the book of Judges, but that the book of Judges is so up and down. Um, I really want to focus on kind of an overview of the scripture instead of going through each, every single little piece, nook and cranny. I will, at a future time, go through a biblical theology much more thoroughly than I am doing here. This is just an overview. So we come to 1 Samuel, and the book of 1 Samuel is important because 1 Samuel is where kingship is established. Whereas in Joshua, Judges, and Ruth, there is no kingship. And even in the first portion of the book of 1 Samuel with Samuel, Samuel's a judge. These judges are the rulers of Israel, but... There are multiple judges. There's not one king that unites all of the tribes. So what's fundamental to understand about the significance of Samuel and the judges is this. In the Old Testament, until the promise came to David, there was rich belief that as the chosen people of God, your child might be the, might be the Messiah. God has promised the Deliverer. We've gone through this. And we, we saw that the seed of the woman, that the deliverer will come through the seed of the woman, is traced through to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. But Jacob blesses all 12 of his sons, and not just one. So there's at this point, there's no real concrete understanding of who might birth the Messiah. So we read of these promises, and to, to be barren... Let me, let me see if this is in the next slide. Um, it wasn't until the promise came to David looking back that verses like Genesis 49.10 would have really been considered messianic. Up until that time, it was still debated who the Messiah would be or where he might come from. Uh, it's upon this foundation that you might be the one who births the Messiah. That first Samuel needs to be understood. Hannah's not crying out because she's being bullied. To be barren is to know that you will never have the chance of birthing Messiah. That's a big deal. You know, in, in that culture, I mean, understand this. This isn't just something that like, well, oh well, big deal. He's still going to come. To have your name written down as being the mother of the Messiah, do you see how big of a deal that is? That's, and it's not just about bragging rights. It's not like I want to say it's bragging rights or something. It's an honor. It is a supreme honor to be considered you're the one who God chose that he wanted to bring forth the deliverer through you. This is why the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and says such high praising words. God chose Mary. Why would he choose Mary instead of Elizabeth or someone else? Why such a high honor to Mary? Why such a high honor for Hannah that he would birth Samuel? Who, Samuel, by the way, um, was not the Messiah. I'm going to get this into, I'm going to get this into later. Um, get into this later. 
Uh, Samuel is not the Messiah, but he is a prophet. And he is a judge of Israel. And there, there's massive significance to Samuel because with Samuel, you have the first uh, the first part of the school of the prophets. It's with Samuel. Before Samuel, the prophetic word is very rare. From Samuel forward, the prophetic word is not rare. Samuel establishes the school. He starts to anoint other prophets. He starts to begin this whole slew of prophets where to the point where you get to Elijah and Jezebel has to kill these prophets all over, there's still a hundred being hidden away in two different caves, fifty in each. How is it that you go from Samuel being like the sole voice of God, the sole mouthpiece of God, that the word of the Lord is very rare in that day, to suddenly even Saul is like coming around these prophets and he's lying there face down prophesying. I mean, how do you get to such a point? Samuel's massively significant for even that reason alone. So Hannah's tears, uh, when she's crying before God, her tears are not intense because of her feeling degraded. I think this is one of the common mis misconceptions. Hannah's tears are because she understands full well what hope there is in possibly birthing the Messiah. And... This is why she cries to God for a son. She promises that to God that she would dedicate this boy to him. Why? Because if God would give her a son, there's the possibility that maybe this boy will be the Messiah, and she's going to dedicate him to the Lord, and even give him the, the Nazarite vow that he will never drink wine, and he's never going to cut his hair, and... Uh, What's the third thing? He's never going to go around a dead body. With, with Samuel here, we have Hannah gives birth to Samuel, a prophet. Once again, not the Messiah, but that's not the point. What the Lord did provide in honor of, of Hannah, and it is a big honor, was a prophet who established the long tradition of the prophets from that time all the way unto Malachi. I mean, the fact that Samuel's a judge, the fact that he's a prophet, the fact that he's like the first prophet to establish the school of the prophets, this is huge, 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 huge. So this is kind of the significance of Samuel in the overview of, of the scripture and kind of gives you an idea of, of why it is that Hannah is crying out. Maybe this also helps to put into perspective what Eve said when she birthed Cain. She rejoices that, that through God she has now given birth to a son. Why? Because he might be the deliverer. And that traces all the way through. Why is it that it's such a big deal that Sarah is barren? Because she's not the one who's going to birth the Messiah. She's barren. And yet God says to Abraham, it's through Sarah that Isaac is going to be born. This is the big deal. Over and over and over again, this is the big deal. So with that, I'm going to end this video on Samuel, and we're going to next time look at Saul's kingdom. And from Saul, we're going to then look at David and, and the significance of David. Always rich significance with David. So um, thanks for listening, and grace and peace to you in Christ.